Greetings, wise ones. This is Melissa of Eighth House Wisdom, author, astrologer, psychotherapist, feminine energy, and stellar planning expert. I'm here with a video for the final new moon of 2022. That is the new moon in Capricorn, which will help us to reveal our highest potential. This is the second Capricorn new moon of the year. So we have a chance to experience success the second time around starting and ending the year with similar energy. If you want to learn more about that, stay tuned for the video. Welcome to the final lunar cycle of 2022. We started the year on 1-2-2022 with a new moon in Capricorn. And here we are two days before Christmas ending the year with one. That makes this year one that's really focused on, very highly focused in fact, on creating structure, foundation, and establishing things of value within our career, our public reputation, the outer world. And we're attempting to do that using the energy of Capricorn and Capricorn season, which is through effort and hard work. At 5.17 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, the new moon will be exact at two degrees Capricorn. The new moon from January 2nd was occurred at 12 degrees Capricorn so it gives us similar energetics but also a bit of a retrospective and a good time period window to think about what were we calling in right at the start of this year as it relates to our New Year's resolutions um, and goal setting for the year after experiencing both spring and fall eclipse season and the timeline shifts that that has produced, it's a really good time for us to take a look at what was going on there so we can figure out where we want to use this highly potent energy signature to get things done. This new moon will also lead us to the Cancer Snow full moon on January the 6th. So we'll be crossing the calendar year and that full moon will be the final of the 2022-2023 lunar year and season because we'll be rolling in to Lunar New Year on the 20th or 20 seconds to be exact um just triple checking that um that date actually it's the 21st depending upon where you you are in the world remember new moons are beginnings and they are the perfect time for setting expectations um and getting clear on our dreams Capricorn 10th house energy is the top of the traditional chart, which we call the Thema Mundi in Hellenistic or traditional Greek astrology. Um, one of the methods I've been trained in. And so 
Capricorn relates to a part of your birth chart called the Midheaven. The Midheaven is the top of your chart that indicates your highest potential and where you can go. And so as we are approaching the end of a yearly cycle, going into a new year, we are being blessed with the opportunity to focus on what's happening at the top of our chart. Capricorn may not be at the top of your chart for everybody, but essentially your highest potential. And depending upon what area of your chart is ruled, your highest potential in that area. We're getting an opportunity to really dig into and think about those things moving ahead because it's important. And considering we started the year in this vibration, there probably are many things that we've already put into motion that we're hoping will continue to unfurl. And if you're like the average person who sets New Year's resolutions and the majority of them don't get accomplished, this is an opportunity to go back at the end of the year, take a look at that, see where you are and make additional revisions or commitments, especially since we have Mercury, our thinking and communication planet in pre-shadow of retrograde and Mars, our energy and drive, still in retrograde motion. The energy in the air around us is going to feel really traditional. We're going to all feel really worky, <laughs> for lack of a better word. We're going to all really want to put in that work. Um, be careful not to get Scrooge vibes right now. Because as we close out this bridging the gap January to Feb uh, through December through January lunar cycle, the focus is on career, public image, the father, and then moving into communities and friendship and technology. Once we hit the new lunar year and that energy. But starting December 23rd, we'll have the new moon in Capricorn, where it is time to initiate and sow our seeds for our future dreams. Followed by December 29th, also the day that Mercury goes retrograde, where we will have the first quarter moon in Aries. Remember, that's the time to commit and lean in a week post around our goals. Followed by the January 6th full moon in Cancer, which is release and results. Um, it's a deciding moment. It'll be interesting to see what happens having a full moon show back up on January the 6th, since that's an important date in the United States political struggle with the insurgency that occurred um, in 2021. And it's a full moon in Cancer in the United States is a cancer with a July 4th birthday. So we'll be looking at that as well um, within the cycle. And then finally, January the 14th will be the last quarter moon in Libra. It's about where you reconsider and balance, how you know, remembering that thinking about the new moon and the first quarter moon, that's when we're nurturing, tending to feeding and fertilizing the seeds that we've put in the ground and from full moon um, through last quarter that's when we're releasing so that we can create space to allow our manifestations to come to us remember that Capricorn energy is archetypally linked to the father it's an earth element so it's got a lot of grounding and a lot of practicality. It's the oldest earth sign. And so it's mature. It's known to be stoic, sometimes melancholy. Again, 
watch your energy so you can avoid Scrooge vibes for Christmas because this new moon, because it takes the moon two to two and a half days to move, will be gracing Christmas morning if that is something that you celebrate and will give us the emotional feel and energetic container for that period of time. So there will be seriousness, there'll be lots of dad energy vibes, um, and some stoicism for sure. And other, other important things to focus on for this new moon, in addition to the fact that this is the second new moon in Capricorn in 2022, is we want to focus on exploring your upper limit boundaries. For some people, excuse me, for all people, we have a set point. For some people, they're unaware of their set point, and though they want to go high, they're internally regulated to stay at 60 when they want to go to 90. So even if they shoot and reach for 90, they'll feel uncomfortable and subconsciously pull themselves back down to 60 because that feels reasonable. That's what an upper limit boundary problem is. That's one of the ways that it blocks success. We want to look at that for ourselves because that gets in the way of us reaching our highest potential, which we are here to do. We want to, once we do that, then we can identify and take action towards our true north and what we're here to do. It's a good time to review your career plans and initiate any next steps related to that. Um, And when I say initiate next steps, write them down, take them out of your head and move them ahead, um, move them into some physical form of reality. I don't recommend getting super started with contract signing because we're moving into a mercury retrograde but maybe you want to open up negotiations as long as you know you can move um and finalize things in mid to late january where when that energy is subsiding this is also a time for us to meditate on and work with the masculine energy and the father energy, recognizing our wounded masculine that tends to get toxic and is solely focused on goal achievement um, without really thinking about anything truly embodied. Um, And then also thinking about positive ways to utilize masculine energy, which is creating structure and support for people and plans. And that's exactly the last recommendation to create structures and foundations for future plans in your life because that's what Capricorn energy is really good for. The last thing that I wanted to focus on before I close out this video is that here we are in our second lunar cycle post the eclipse timeline shift. And in addition to that, this new moon in Capricorn is going to be linked to and have connections to Pluto and its final voyage through the sign of Capricorn. There will be a conjunction at some point and Pluto, which means they'll be touching each other by degree, Um, And that means that the moon and our intuitions and our emotional nature and all of those things will also be touching this transformational energy. Pluto has been in Capricorn since 20, excuse me, since 2008. So that's been 12 years of being in that sign where lots of rules and traditions uh, have been dying and being transformed less rigid, less stoic, and moving to favor a bit more what has happened over the past 30 years uh, with the World Wide Web and things of that nature as we've embraced technology and deeper forms of technology. When Pluto enters Aquarius, we'll really probably be experiencing somewhat of a digital revolution and a transformation there. Um, around our sense of community, within our friendships, just the role that electronics 
technology, not all technology is electronic as well, but the role that that plays in our life. Capricorn is really demanding. It wants your best, right, as a sign. Um, it's known to be disciplined, very difficult to open up on an emotional level because it, it uses that seriousness and stoicism it to catapult itself to the highest space. Even though most Capricorns don't have a straight trajectory from wherever they're at to the top, they usually meander up and down. So they're also endurers and know how to really roll with the punches. And part of that is because they remain so dispassionate. For you to know more about where this new moon is impacting or lighting up your chart, make sure you head over to my blog so you can get the download of what part of your chart is being activated and where you might want to look to see certain energies such as this showing up and coming about. Last but not least, just in terms of trying to work with this lunar cycle, it's a mashup. Jupiter just entered Aries as of the start of this week. Fine, that was its last bit of journey in the sign of Pisces. So with Jupiter and Aries, we have a little bit more fiery energy and a little bit of get up and go. Um, those two things together, the new moon in Capricorn and Jupiter in Aries, will want us to take initiatory action will want us to expand and Capricorn will want us to be thorough and aware of all that we're doing so we can do it best. Note that this next six months is going to be a really good time to roll out new endeavors, especially if you're thinking about and putting finishing touches on it now and then we'll be working with the energy to release it so that in places where you feel stuck or where you're feeling like you're in a difficult season, you can ride that out and get to the other side. This lunar cycle is a really great one because again, it falls in between the solstice and um, Chinese New Year or Lunar New Year. And so, it ends up being a really helpful launch pad for setting up goals. I totally recommend setting up goals with soul. I am not the biggest fan of making New Year's resolutions because they are not masculine feminine energy balanced. Setting resolutions usually is a masculine process that you hope to uh, experience happiness because you achieved. Whereas my process as a desire mapper is to start with how I feel and how I desire to feel. And my desire map is creative, free, fulfilled, relaxed, and sacred. I start with those things in the ways that I want to feel and then I'm working with that which is my energetic and creative container to then start saying what other things I'm gonna lay lay down for a new year and whatever projection I have has to support me in feeling that way otherwise it simply exists in the realm of good ideas but not something that I should be dedicating my time and energy to. Having said that, this period of time and this final lunar cycle of 2022 into 2023 will give us an opportunity to do that kind of work. And it would be highly beneficial to do so such that you end up feeling the way that you want to feel when you get to the place that you want to get to and a process like that is also super useful since we're still leapfrogging through those retrograde energies 
Before going, I just wanted to leave you with a few questions and prompts to ask yourself for the new moon in Capricorn. They are the same ones that I provided at the start of the year. And I think re beginning and closing the year asking yourself these questions will be really helpful in synthesizing the lunar wisdom that you've been downloading over the course of the 12 months of 2022. First up, what's arising within you and without? What vision or dream are you birthing or holding space for in yourself, your work, or your community? And finally, what's the birth plan for your goal and what is your definition of success? The Capricorn and Cancer dynamic remind us of masculine and feminine energy because Cancer is the home and the maternal energy of the Zodiac and Capricorn is the father and or career aspect of the Zodiac. If we think about those themes, including the masculine and feminine energies that I'm talking about, and utilize that to really project where we want to be, we'll be in our best space going forward as we project positivity and great things for our upcoming new month and new year. If you want to learn more about working with the new moon and where it falls in your chart, then you'll have to head over to my blog so that you can get a, and website so you can get a free copy of your birth chart. And that will allow you to apply the information that we learned here in your chart and in your life for better stellar planning. And if you're interested in figuring out how to really tweak that process, then you can get my DIY guide, the Lunar Wisdom Formula, which will help you understand how to best make use of that energy signature in Capricorn, help you understand where it applies is applied in your chart and help you then create goals and and set intentions that help you go with the flow and utilize the energy in the most appropriate of ways. Now, I love a good crystal as you guys know and it is a perfect time to grab crystals so you can charge them and get them ready for the new year check out the description box below and click the link so you can check out these ethically high quality crystals which i love they're greatly sourced use my coupon code eighth house wisdom to get 11 percent off and get ready to get stocked up for our upcoming new year and for crystals to work with for winter. And of course, I love selling planning. I'm a seller planning expert. I would love to have you check out a cop, the replay of my seller planning for 2023 workshop where I have gone over my precious gems of the stellar planning process to help you triple your new year manifestation with the power of astrology. This really helps you break down all the things that you need to be thinking about in order to really create a schedule and plan that feels the way that you want to do, want it to. This is the missing piece of your calendar and scheduling process. And if you're looking to apply that information, 
then you're going to need to get a copy of the Stellar Year Blueprint for 2023. It dropped on December 21st, the solstice, and it will give you an energetic out an astrological outline and for what's going on with 2023 and will help you know what to pay attention to so that you can best plan and maneuver and ensure feelings of success moving ahead last but not least if you want that at a higher touch then you need to check out my class which is the stellar year blueprint it's a um with free and clear in the desire map that's where i take people through the process of learning how to set goals with soul um that will always help you feel like you're winning and will prevent you feeling like you reached the end of a new year with resolutions undone because what you're really planning for is feeling the way you want to feel in every space. And when we get there, that is the closest definition of true happiness that I know. I hope that this has been informative and that you've gotten something useful to apply for this hard working Capricorn new moon the second time around. It's always my pleasure to bring you information about the new moon and remember wise ones life does come with an instruction manual it is written in the stars until my next video take care and new moon blessings light and love